the Fed's been operating its monetary policy while looking in the rearview mirror because they keep creating inflation, right? Printing money, quantitative easing, whatever you want to call it. And they keep printing more and more money. And they look at the CPI. And, and as long as it's below 2% or some version of it, they think it's okay to keep printing money. Meanwhile, they're ignoring the road ahead. The problem is they're going to raise rates enough to crush the economy, but not enough to slow inflation. And in fact, as inflation gets worse, that's going to be another drag on the economy. And so what you've got to do, what I'm trying to tell you, is you've got to get out of all of the bubble assets that were propped up by all the cheap money. Because even though money is cheap, it may be slightly less cheap for a while, and that's enough to collapse the bubble. But you can't just go to cash because inflation is very high and it's eroding away the value of your cash. There's no safety there. You can't buy bonds. Bonds are even worse than cash because it's cash in the future. But in the meanwhile, you're tying your cash up and inflation is eating it up. I think the balls are already in motion because, you know, we had this big increase in consumer prices in 2021. Prices were up 7%, maybe a little bit more during 2021. That would be the highest rate, I think, since 1982-ish. But, you know, if we still measured prices the way we measured them in 1982, we would have, uh, you know, reported about a 15% increase in consumer prices, which would make it worse than any individual year during the 1970s or 1980. So this was a horrible year of inflation. And I think this is, you know, really the beginning of the end because now the Fed can no longer justify 0% interest rates and quantitative easing. It needs to raise interest rates. And it's now talking about raising interest rates. And it may, in fact, raise them. We'll see. It may not just talk. It may actually do it. But the problem is even the rate hikes they're talking about are too small and too late to make a difference. Because the Fed is talking about raising interest rates maybe to 1% by the end of the year, and then maybe to 2% by the end of next year. Well, we got 7% inflation. You can't raise rates to 1% or 2%. Rates need to be higher than the rate of inflation if you want to slow the rate of inflation. So interest rates need to go, I don't know, 10%. But of course, we can't even get near 10%. We can't even get to 5%. We have so much debt because of all the past money printing and all the stimulus of the Fed, they have created a situation where it's impossible to fight inflation. And so they won't do it. And that's going to be the seeds of the next crisis, because as the Fed is tightening up on its monetary policy to make it less loose, right? We're not going to have tight money. We're just going to have money that's less loose than it was before. The problem is less loose is not enough to sustain the asset bubbles, you know, in a lot of these financial assets. So we get a crash, but it's not tight enough to actually bend the inflation curve. And so inflation is going to keep getting worse, even as the Fed is hiking rates supposedly to fight it. That's going to lead to stagflation. That's ultimately going to cause the Fed to reverse course and start easing again, even though inflation will be worse than when it started its tightening campaign. And somewhere along the way, the markets are going to wake up to this reality and the dollar or the bottom rather is going to drop out of the dollar. And then we're going to have a currency crisis that will morph into a sovereign death crisis. And then it's all over. You know, then we have a, a, a real collapse because then the Fed has to let interest rates go way up and everything comes crashing down in a much more spectacular way than 08, except nobody gets bailed out. Everybody has to suffer the losses in their entirety and they'll be much bigger. Or they don't have the guts to do that and they just keep printing money anyway and they, they print the dollar into oblivion and we have hyperinflation, which of course would be even worse. So people have to go out of these risky momentum stocks into value. And what we're seeing is a massive shift out of U.S. growth stocks to international 
value stocks, stocks in Europe, stocks in Asia, basic businesses that have real earnings right now, that pay good dividends right now. That's where investors are hiding out. That's why you're seeing some of these stocks up 10, 20 percent on the year with no news, even as U.S. tech stocks are cratering and all the bubble stocks, including the cryptocurrencies. All that stuff is going down. You got to get into real assets. You got to get into value. You got to get out of paper and you got to get out of U.S. paper in particular, because we've got the biggest inflation problem that we can't do anything about because we're so loaded up with debt. There's no way to fight inflation without collapsing the entire economy because the whole economy is built on the foundation of these artificially low interest rates. But in order to fight inflation, you have to remove that foundation. And then if you do that, everything built on top of it comes crashing down. Most people, when you think about a stock market, you're thinking about the entire market and index. I want to own businesses. I have to get out of cash, but I can't own, you know, the momentum stocks. I can't own these, you know, high flying companies that don't have any earnings. And I can't buy cryptocurrencies, which have no value or no earnings. You know, they went up along with everything else. I want to own something real. So I own businesses, tangible companies that have property, plant, equipment. What you want to do with inflation is recognize that the biggest losers are creditors, people who are owed money and are going to be paid that money in depreciated currency. So you don't want to be a creditor in U.S. dollars. So you don't want to own cash. You don't want to own bonds. You don't want to be in annuities or you don't want cash value in a in an insurance policy. You've got to own real things. And that's why I'm buying all these foreign stocks, companies that pay very high dividends. I mean, I'm buying stocks for some of them are trading for under 10 times earnings. Uh, many of them pay dividend yields of five to 10 percent. I get that cash. I can spend it. If you're retired, you can use that cash to you know, finance your living. And as the dollar goes down, the value of those dividends will go up. And of course, the companies that I own, they're all raising their prices now. So they're going to be able to raise their prices. So they're going to have higher earnings and they can pay me higher dividends. So those increasing dividends will keep pace with an increasing cost of living. But a lot of Americans who are in the U.S. stock market, they're collecting no dividends. Uh, they just have overpriced stocks that are falling. And if they have money in bonds, the low interest rates that they're earning are completely inadequate. They're being more than offset by inflation. If you're getting two or three percent interest and inflation is seven or 10 percent, you're going backwards every year. And eventually you won't be able to afford to maintain your lifestyle, especially if you're retired. Bonds are riskier than stocks right now. I mean, yes. it's unfortunate because bonds are where you're supposed to go when you want to play it safe, because you're not taking the risk of the stock market. You're guaranteed to get your money back. The person who you loan the money to is committed to paying you back. And you know what your return is going to be because you have a fixed interest. But the problem is anyone who buys bonds now in this environment is overpaying. The prices are inflated because of the Fed. So you're paying this ridiculously high price for an asset that barely throws off a yield. Yeah. Interest rates eventually rise. The price of the bond collapses. But meanwhile, inflation is destroying the value of the bonds, of the cash rather, that the bonds are going to pay you. Bonds are extremely risky. I mean, people talk about treasuries as risk-free return. I've been calling it return-free risk for years. <laughs> I mean, nothing's safe anymore, thanks to the central bankers. So you have to look at degrees of risk. And to me, I think it's a lot less risky to be in foreign equities than U.S. bonds. I think it's a lot less risky to be in gold and silver than in U.S. dollars. One of the ways you know the stock is a good value, you look at the income, just like when you look at a piece of property and you're looking for the cash flow, you're looking at what the rents are relative to cost of operating it. If I own a business, I want to know what my piece of the profits are. What am I going to get? What's my return on my investment? Forget about potential appreciation. I don't care about that. I mean, what if I never sell the stock? What is my return on owning this stock? And that return is the dividend. It can also be capital appreciation if the company has enough income to buy back stock and deliver some of my income in the form of capital gains. So you also look at the earnings. 
because most companies don't pay out all their earnings in dividends. So you still are, you know, entitled to a share of the earnings of the company when you're a stockholder, even if those earnings aren't paid out in dividends. But you look at all these valuations and you determine if that's a good place uh, for your money. Now, fortunately, there's a lot of good businesses around the world that we can own a piece of and preserve our wealth that way. But, you know, all of these assets are going to get increasingly more expensive for Americans as the dollar loses value. So people have to act quickly while they can still afford to buy these stocks. The last decade was all about U.S. stock market. The U.S. stock market outperformed the rest of the world because the rest of the world's got value stocks and we've got hyped up momentum in tech stocks. And so the world wanted those stocks. They don't want them anymore. They're getting rid of those stocks. And that's also a big problem for the dollar because we were recycling our trade deficits because foreigners at one point took the dollars they earned selling us stuff and they bought our bonds. But then our bonds became so expensive, the yields were so low, they started buying our stocks. Well, now our stocks are really expensive. There's nothing that we have that they want. The dollar is going to collapse. But in the meantime, we're getting into these foreign stocks. They're the ones that are going to do really well in this decade. Nothing that worked in the last decade will work in this one. It's a totally different environment. This is stagflation. And the same thing with cryptocurrencies. If you bought Bitcoin, you know, at the beginning of the last decade and wrote it up for 10 years, you cleaned up as well as a lot of these other cryptocurrencies. What's going to happen now is it's a rotation out of fool's gold into the real thing. So now it's time to take your profits in that Bitcoin that you bought a while ago, because this is the rotation. It's out of hype into value. And that includes out of cryptocurrencies into real money, into gold and silver. It's all about value and it's about getting out of the dollar and protecting yourselves from a real economic crisis in the United States because it's coming. We have delayed the day of reckoning for decades now. As a result, the problems are much bigger, so we have a lot more to reckon with. It is going to be a very, very difficult environment financially in the United States. Think about the 1970s, only way worse, much higher inflation, a much weaker economy, and we're starting from a much more vulnerable position. The political land landscape is far scarier now. Uh, socialism was not acceptable in the 1970s. Most people would not vote for socialism. Now people embrace socialism. Capitalism has never had a worse reputation, unfortunately, than it does right now. So it's a very dangerous time to be invested in America. And so you just need to do what you can. And I'm helping Americans because I care about the country and I care about my fellow Americans. I don't want them to go broke.